good morning listeners today we will discuss one topic which is a uh, very interesting uh, for the understanding of the uh, silicon what is silicon actually we are getting the silicon from sand and what is the silicon if i will ask this question then it will be very important to know that the source of silicon as well as the application of the silicon the application of the silicon is basically we are using in our daily life as an electronic gadgets inside the electronic gadgets the heart or the main driver of the electronic gadgets is nothing but the integrated circuits and how we can make this integrated circuits the basic platform is nothing but a silicon wafer this is the silicon wafer from where we are getting this we are getting from sand it is an abundant source in our nature you know from the beach the sea beach we can get plenty of this sand this is nothing but a silica silicon dioxide from the silicon dioxide we will get the silicon wafer and from the silicon wafer we can get the integrated circuits that's why we are showing these images so far in this uh, presentations first part involves the how we can uh, do the the fabrications or manufactures of silicon wafer and next part is basically the types of the silicon wafer the next phase or next part we will show how to determine or identify the different types of the silicon wafer by a real time experiment okay so next what is the primary source of silicon i already told this is nothing but sand but after that we will do the reduction process such that we can isolate the oxygen from the silicon and we are calling it metallurgical grade silicon the purity is 98% the purity is 98% you can understand that we cannot use this for our purpose so for that we need another technique which is called the float zone technique this is called the float zone technique where the impurities are isolated the rest of the impurities are isolated from the polysilicon and we can find the single sil crystal silicon which is electronic grade silicon and this electronic grade silicons we are coming in the form of ingots this is the silicon ingots the weights nearly 100 kg and the purity is 6n means 99.9999% of purity we can achieve from the silicon ingot now what is happening that we have to isolate the slice the silicons from the silicon ingot we have to slice such that we can get the silicon wafer that is the silicon wafer which is basically the topic of our interest and here i am not discussing the integrated circuits that means wafer to integrated circuits that is the another topic and in my previous uh, videos if uh, you are really interested you can see the things we i discussed some of things right like bi bipolar junction transistor right so here the next question in our mind that this is the silicon wafer that's okay but this is intrinsic or pure silicon wafer i told you pure 99.9999% pure so i cannot use this for our purpose because it is a semiconductor so what we have to do we have to increase the mobility or the conductivity of the system such that we can increase the speed of our electronic gadgets or devices so for that what we have next we have to think about that is the how we can introduce the impurities you know the doping doping is very common maradona is also did the doping you know when we are doing the doping that means we are basically enhancing our capability right 
enhancing our capability. So that's why I just put the purpose that tuning the conductivity due to lack or excess of charge carriers. Two types of uh, things are there. One is P-type and N-type. The process which is basically adapting in the industry to manufacture or to make the doping process, we are using the diffusion process, one of the process. Another process is the ion implantation process also. In the diffusion process, here this is the thermal uh, chamber, thermal processing chamber. There we can put the, vertically we can put the uh, wafer and this is the source of the precursor. We are using the uh, phospin or diborane for uh, coming here as a source of the different element and what is happening here by the diffusion process or by the you know the by the uh, different uh, the ion implantation process the silicon atoms will be substituted by the trivalent that is aluminium or boron or pentavalent like phosphorus or arsenic here so this is basically the substitute by boron or aluminium to the silicon atoms. Then we can say it is a P-type. That means the majority carrier is the holes and N-type is the majority carrier is the electrons. So next question, how we can identify? From the manufacturer, that means the industry, they are making some indications such that we can easily understand that which one is N-type, which one is P-type with proper crystal orientation. So this is the crystal orientations, that means the atomic orientations are inside the crystals, you know, that is the for silicon atoms, two, it is uh, FCC2 uh, face centered cube are intersecting to each other, right? And there, uh, I'm not going in detail about the lattice uh, structure, but it is just, I'm just giving you the one source. Now here you can see that the uh, generally, we are using the 100 p-type silicon wafer for uh, integrated circuit fabrications, which we are using in the electronic gadgets like microprocessors, in the different com like computers, laptops, smartphone, everywhere. Right. So, this is the things. Now, how to determine P or n-type silicon wafer? A real-time experimental video that is presented by Mr. Nikita Chetri. Please see the next one for understanding the same. Thank you and please watch the next video to understand the same. Good morning everyone. In this video we will learn about hot proof method. So hot proof method is a method in which by which we can determine whether a given wafer is a P type or N type. So this is a this is the silicon wafer. This is the rough side and this is the polished side of the silicon wafer. So main application, one of the application of silicon wafer is as integrated circuit in electronic devices. So while manufacturing a silicon wafer, what industries does is they provide identification for type as well as for orientation. So in this we can see there are two lines. One is over here and the other one is over here. So these two lines indicate that the given wafer is in type having an orientation of 100. So now we'll test it. Supposedly we have a small silicon wafers such as these one, these. So we do not know what type of silicon wafers are this. So we can just do a simple test using hot proof method to determine the uh, type of the given silicon wafer. So do, for doing hot proof method we require two things. One is multimeter and a heat source that is hot probe. Here we are using hot uh, shouldering iron as our hot probe. So what we will do is we will place the hot probe on the silicon wafer and then we will put the positive lead on the hot probe and the negative lead on the wafer. So we will see the deflection on the multimeter we can see that it gives a positive reading for DC voltage. So which indicates that the given wafer is a n-type wafer. So what actually happening is the heat from the hot probe what it will do it will cause charge carriers to move away from it. That is electrons in case of n-types and holes in case of p-type. 
so the charges will diffuse away from the contact point that is hot probe towards the cold probe causing a certain potential difference over there so in case of n type what is happening is that the thermally excited electrons around the hot probe will move from it towards the cold probe and then it will result in a positive voltage reading which we saw through our multimeter so that indicates that the given wafer is n type now we have small wafers over here so here we will do the test to determine whether it is the n type or it is p type so what we will do we will place the positive lead on the probe and then the negative lead on the wafer and then we will see and then we will see in the multimeter so what it shows it shows the negative deflection that means the given wafer that is this piece of wafer is of p type so this is the easiest and very convenient method to test whether the given wafer is a p type or n type so thank you hope this video will help you